hey, what's going on? This is Pastor John here with you for the for the 5B4 podcast. It is good to be with you today on this beautiful Tuesday, man. If you are not living in Georgia today, you are in the wrong part of the country right now because this is a beautiful day that we have today. Uh, the Bible says, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it, and I am rejoicing in this day. And I'm rejoicing in the fact that you're watching or listening, however you may be coming to us. Thank you so much uh, for being being a part. And uh, we told you yesterday that we're talking about um, just a, a very relevant subject right now, and that is unity, um, coming against the division between our brothers and sisters. Oh, man, this is so needed right now, and I hope that that this week that we'll be able to give you some, some really good, powerful teaching, um, little bits of encouragement. These are little nuggets, man. Again, I know that these teachings are small and short and simple sometimes, but they... Um, they they are so needed right now, these little nuggets that we're giving to you. So please just uh, just let's apply these things, man. Can we, will you make a, an, an effort with me? Will you uh, make a, a decision with me to say, I'm going to do everything that I can do to bring unity back together? So we're going to look at that again today and why that matters. We're going to talk about one of the biggest parts about unity. And I told you yesterday that this could have been the first one if we wanted it to. It was hard to decide between which one I was going to do first. Um, there's so many things I want to share through all of this, but but this is a really, really big point that I want to make to you. I'm going to read you a long section of pa- of a scripture, not real long, just a few verses, like six or so, um, but I want you to focus on one part, but I want to give you the full context. Listen to what it says. We're not even going to focus on this first part today. We're going to do that later this week. Uh, it says in Matthew chapter 18, And we're going to start reading in verse 15. It says, if your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, then you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. It is, if they refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you want a pagan or a tax collector. Verse 18, truly I tell you, listen where he goes right from that section about the division between us and our brothers when, when, when there's division. Listen what he says. He says, truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask, Anything, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. Isn't this interesting that all of this is found in this context of division? And we're going to look more at this passage later this week. I'm going to read you from 15, and we're going to go all the way down through the parable that follows this. But I want to focus on verses uh, 18, 19, and 20 today to remind you, one of the reasons that unity is so important is because unity is a conduit for the presence of God. Unity is a conduit for the miracles of God. Unity is the conduit for a move of God. That is why um, when it comes to church ministry, one of my biggest pet peeves is division. Um, There are pastors, denominations um, who they focus more on trying to divide the people of God than they do to bring the people together. This passage here says, for where two or three gather in my name, It does not say that we have to agree on all the same stuff. It doesn't say that we have to see eye to eye on everything. What the Bible says is if we gather together in the name of Christ, in the name of God, if we come together, that, listen, the one thing that should tie us together is him. It does not have to be every theological belief. It does not have to be every political belief. It has. It does not have to be um, everything that we agree on scientifically. What needs to bring us together is one thing and one thing alone, and that is him. We have the same motive with him. Uh, I, I want to encourage you right now um, to, to be intentional about bringing together and not being divisive because when we are divisive, we are hindering a move of God. Verse 18 is usually read by itself out of context. And it says, I tell you, whatever you bond on earth, and we take the word you there as a singular you. But how many of you know that you can have a singular you or you can have a plural you? And if you look at verses 15 all the way to verse 20, 
we need to understand that when it says that anything that you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, anything you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven, it is not talking about the singular you. It is talking about the plural us. When we come together in the name of God, when we come together with one mind and one accord, we see this in Acts chapter two, man, that these guys come together. They were from different countries. They spoke different languages. They had all different belief systems. Again, we know they had different belief systems because you can look at the New Testament and see all the different belief systems that Paul was having to deal with, with all the different people from all the different countries and all the different cities, man. It was constantly trying to bring them together in unity despite their differences. And in Acts 2, man, we see that they came together despite their differences in God. That was the only thing that brought them together. They were not from the same country. They did not speak the same language. They did not have the same experiences with Jesus Christ walking on this earth, but they came together in one mind, and that was to see God. And if we can do that, then we can experience Acts chapter 2 all over again. We can see Pentecost come. We can see a move of God like we've been praying for, like we've been dreaming for, like we've been expecting if we can come back together. But as long as we are letting the enemy divide us, like the scripture talks about here in verses 15 to 17, then we are limiting what the heavens can do. We are limiting what the presence of God is going to be able to do. To do. It does not mean that God can't do great things. It does not mean that God cannot do um, some mighty acts and mighty works in your life as an individual. That That is something God does do. It is something God can do. But it does not compare to when the people of God dwell together in unity. I mean, scripture all over the Bible, you remember David said one time, he said, how good and pleasing and pleasant it is when the people of God dwell together in unity. I mean, all of this stuff um, just reminds us about how important it is that we come together. Why is it important? It is so much bigger than just so we wouldn't have arguments. That's why we think we should be unified because we don't we don't want confrontation. We don't want arguments. We don't want to offend people. And all of that is true. We don't, we don't want arguments. We don't want to offend people. But the real reason that we want to come together in unity is so that we can see God move in ways that we've never seen him move, that we can experience God in ways that we've never experienced God. And that happens when we come together together in his name despite our differences. So I'm going to encourage you today, as we did yesterday, and I'm going to encourage you today to to take time today to say, okay, God, help me be intentional about coming against the division between my brothers and sisters so that I can see you move. I want that to be your motive for it today. I don't, I don't want it to be a thing of where it's for your feelings or for it's their, so it's for their feelings. It's so much bigger than that. It is so we can see God, we can experience God in an, in an incredible way. And I, for one, listen, I don't know about any of you that are watching or listening right now. I am hungry to see God move in the midst of where we are. I have no doubt in my mind that this is the time the church has been set up for, for a season just like this, where there seems to be so much chaos and so much division. This is when we need to see God move. This is when we need to see God show up. I am hungry, as I hope you are. I am hungry to see God move, man, to see God show up to see God save people, to see God rescue people, to see God uh, forgive people, to see God heal people, all the stuff that God does. I'm hungry to see God's presence move, and it is going to happen when we come together in unity. So wherever there's wherever there's a, a, a place where there's division or separation right now in your life, I want you to work extremely hard to let that go. Work extremely hard to reunite. I want you to work extremely hard to forgive. I want you to work extremely hard right now to um, bridge that gap right now so that we can see God move. Man, our, our culture needs it. The world needs it right now. We have got to be the church, and we will only be the church the world is looking for if we come together and are unified. So I want you to find today, listen to me, I want you to find two or three people that you can gather together with in prayer. That's what I challenge you to do. Uh, I want you to gather together with two or three people, and I want you to pray, and I want you to seek the face of God. I want you to invite the presence of God. Maybe it's maybe you're at work right now. Find two or three people to pray with you at work. Maybe you're at the grocery store, or you're at, you're at, you're at home. Listen, do a phone call with somebody. Do a Zoom meeting if you're not getting out. You maybe you're at home and you're quarantined. Do a Zoom meeting with someone right now. Bridge the gap with somebody right now that you know loves God, and just say, listen, me and you, we're going to get together today, and we're going to pray for pray for 
pray for God to move. We're going to pray for God to show up and let's just see what may happen and watch God blow your mind and show up and help you experience him in amazing ways. Um, will you do that with me today? Will you accept that challenge? Uh, man, love you guys. Let me pray for you today. Um, we are gathered here today. I'm gathered with you to see God move. So let's pray and let's invite God. God, thank you for this word. I thank you that I'm even a testimony to this word as someone was just sitting in my office. It was just two of us. And we were gathered together in your name and you showed up. You showed up in an incredible way. And I thank you, God, that you've proven your word to be true even today for me, just a few moments ago. And I pray for those that are listening, those that are watching right now, and that you would prove to them the same. I pray in Jesus' name that you would show them, God, that you are ready to move. And where you move best is where two or three or more are gathered together in unity. Doesn't mean we all agree on everything. It doesn't mean we don't, we don't have differences. It doesn't mean we see eye to eye on everything. But the one thing that brings us together, God, help us see the one thing that matters. We focus on all the things in our life that we are, are different on, and that's what we focus on. And those are the things that don't even matter. The only thing that matters is can we come together wanting to see God, wanting to know God, wanting to experience God. And that's my heart today. God, I'm very passionate about this. God, that's my heart. Help us come together with the one thing that matters. I pray in Jesus' name right now that you will bring us together so that we can see you, that we can see you move. Help our, help our churches, not just within the walls of each church, but God, help the churches between churches Help us come together in unity, Father, so that we can see you and know you and experience you. Our world is hungry for you. Our hunger is in a desperate place right now to see you move. So God, bring us together. Stop division. Bring us together. Stop separation. God, it seems like we are getting further and further apart rather than coming together together. God, I pray for a paradigm shift right now in that. God, I pray for a, a catalyst moment right now that what was separating now would begin to bring us together because we were being separated by all of these differences, but now we're in such a desperate place where we need to see you. God, help our desperation seek you together so that we all know that, God, we've got to get beyond those differences because we are at a place right now where we have to come together. We have to come together to see you. So bring us together. Help us find two or three today to gather together with in your name, praying, seeking you. And God, I pray that your word would be faithful for them as it has been for me already today and that you would show up in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, man. Wow, what a powerful thing today. What a powerful time of prayer. Listen, I told you yesterday, share this, man. Get this word out there to somebody. Uh, accept the challenge. Use this today to go out um, and to connect with somebody to see God. Come on, let's see what God can do. Let's stop the division. Let's come together in unity. Love you guys. Have an awesome Tuesday, man. We'll be back with you tomorrow to talk about unity again.